Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields today. Today we're going to talk about noise and low frequency treatment requirements. Noise we know is noise, sounds we don't want in the room. Maybe noise is something we don't want leaving the room, bothering neighbors. So it's this two-way valve, so to speak, coming in the room, going out of the room. You drummers know what exactly what I'm saying and bass players. So noise, we know we have to use a barrier. We have to put something between, if this is source and this is receiver, we have to put something between the two. Okay, it's called a barrier. All barriers take space. The space requirements are based upon, we know, frequency and amplitude of the noise. If it's a garbage truck, it's going to be different noise than a kid on a bike with a bell on the handlebars. Completely different frequency, completely different amplitude. The technologies are completely different. What works for the boy with the bell on his handlebars won't work for the garbage truck. What works for the garbage truck may not work for the boy with the handlebars, with the bell on the handlebars. So we can talk about that in a future video. But the bottom line here is space. You got to have distance. You got to have the space to treat the problem. Low frequency treatment is, has lots of space requirements. I don't care what the literature says. I don't care what these companies out there that tell you uh, that foam is good for low frequencies, that this two inch deep product will keep the garbage truck from uh, not coming into your room, the noise from that. All of this is nonsense, okay? So you have to be very, very careful here. And one of the ways to help you figure that out is to use the acronym that we've created called TAP, Type, Amount, and Position of Treatment. And all of the TAP variables are based on frequency and amplitude. So define, treat, define, treat, define, and treat. Now, barriers, depending on our noise, frequency, and amplitude, if we're that garbage truck noise that we don't want in our mixes, be up to 6 to 14 inches. That's a lot of space. That's a lot of weight. It's a lot of cost. I'm designing a studio now in Las Vegas. Their building is right below the flight path of the airport there in Vegas, where it's an international airport. You have flights coming in all the time. So if you don't treat, you can only use the room about every 18 minutes because then the next plane comes in, because I timed it. And when it comes in, you should watch the RTA, okay? Pressure goes up by 15, 20 dB. Amplitude is crazy. Frequency is always lower because of the engines of the jet. So to get this studio in a workable condition, we're gonna have to build a barrier, okay? I haven't run the numbers yet. It's probably gonna be deeper bigger, thicker than 14 inches. So there again, location, location, location. Not in terms of curb appeal, which is the criteria most real estate people use, but in terms of quiet, okay, low noise floors. So barriers, depending on frequency and amplitude, take space. So does low frequency treatment. People are like, well, a guy the other day tell me, your stuff is too bulky. I think was the term he used. And I said, well, it's the most powerful technology in the marketplace for low frequency. And I guess one could consider it's bulky, but it works. So the trade-off is what kind of problems do you want to solve and what kind of problems do you have to live with or want to live with? So the bottom line here is low frequency treatment and barrier technology take space. Okay. so. Middle and high frequency, that's the least of our problems. Space requirements are not that, that great, even in barriers and treatment technology. So the bottom line here is noise and low frequency treatment take space. Now, here's another thing we have to realize in a room. We have our carbon absorbing wall, the CAW, and we frame out all our rooms with the 2 inch by 12 inch stud. Then we put our carbon filters in the in the inside of it. Now, we can increase the thickness of our carbon filters to deal with some excess pressure. 
if we can't get it in the depth of the cavity. Okay, so but we have limitations there. We can impact 10, 15, maybe 20% improvement, but your costs go way up. But we can do it in your 12 inch depth space requirement. Sometimes we can't. So it just depends on how, how much energy we're dealing with in the room. So just remember that noise and low frequency treatment technologies take space and that's your outside dimension. In noise and your inside dimension, you have to be careful of. So if we need too much treatment inside the room, we're gonna change the dimensions of the room and we might create a whole new set of problems. So the key is to choose a room that has enough volume and dimension that we can treat and not cause any additional problems, just solve the problems that we have in our room. Hope this helps, noise versus low frequency, just think space. The more noise I have, the thicker the wall I'm gonna to have to build in most cases. The smaller my room, the larger the low frequency problems I'm gonna have, so I'm gonna need more space to treat. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.